issue is uh, from cardiology perspective. So there is a uh, plethora of multi-speciality uh, doctor in this crowd. Physician, cardiologist, nephrologist, diabetologist, hepatologist, endocrinologist. But all logists at certain point of time deal with multiple specialities. So one of these challenges is already partly was discussing, uh, discussed in the uh, previous session. The uh, issues of accepting the side effect of guideline directed medical therapy in heart failure. So whether we should be liberal or we should be conservative. The same thing is if somebody has atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease which goes hand in hand in patient with CKD, what do we do? We forget the CKD or we forget the ASCVD or we give due consideration for both of them. Uh, in my presentation, there are some pharmaceutical agent has been uh, mentioned. There is no conflict of interest in this. I am deliberately mentioned because I didn't get the time. So I thought that I quickly do it. So uh, if you can see, uh, this is an index patient uh, whose age is uh, at 80s and 88 plus. So although the resolution is not that bad, good, I'll just read out that uh, he admitted she was admitted with acute decompensated heart failure and uh, she had uh, uh, also respiratory tract infection and uh, that happened in last few years period of time in the form of uh, winter exacerbation and uh, nasal symptoms so it's not uh, definitely added component bilateral pleural effusion chronic atrial fibrillation had a angioplasty in 2024 after a myocardial infarction and uh, admitted in my center with NSVT and then we put a AICD last year. And additionally, he has hyperthyroidism and hyper, hypertension and hypothyroidism as you can see. A good thing he is not diabetic and the creatinine uh, at the present moment is 3 plus. And if we see the previous few admissions, there are some admissions, there are some OPD reports. So hemoglobin reasonably well, and uh, the iron deficiency anemia was excluded. He is also on the supervision of nephrologist who has given them novodosis and nephrosib and calcium supplementation. And uh, the potassium never went very high, and the creatinine was like this and the fact is this patient is on this medicine so the number one is apixaban 2.5 milligram twice daily this is for chronic atrial fibrillation on the background of heart failure to prevent cardioembolic stroke this is very sequat because of recurrent heart failure we have started then there is a SGLT2 inhibitor which is being continued. Then there is a beta blocker and the amiodarone was been not withdrawn because if we withdraw and there is sudden recurrent VT, you will have uh, exhaustion of the AICD. Thyronorm is the added button which was not there but after starting amiodarone I had to give it and to offload uh, she was also on a high ceiling thiazide diuretic <laughs> and in page one there was a torsemite also he she is on mra also she is on very small dose of arni and this i cannot stop she requested that please don't this antacid, I cannot survive without this. So, what I learned from this index case, this patient is on four foundational therapy. If we take very sequat as a fifth one, on for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. But I have not been able to protect the kidney. I have still not been able to protect repeat or prevent repeat hospitalization. So 
This is the fact. Whatever you do, you have limitation. So I don't say that what I have done is right or wrong. I have done with the idea that patient will not come and patient will do better. Yes, at the present moment it is yes, but each hospitalization is bad. Death is inevitable at 88 years, but how the death is going to come is not in our hand. And anybody as of now need to understand that when it comes to solely a cardiac issues like a major cardiovascular event, what major cardiovascular event a patient has in their lifetime, either a myocardial infarction, either a heart failure or atrial fibrillation. And whenever it happens, you will find the incident, incidentally detected CKD and the prevalence of CKD both are high and particularly so it is with heart failure patient. And this remains in subsequent three years. So after three years of period, many of them need, need even real replacement therapy. So this is very recent data and this is observational data. But still we don't have any guidelines. So where we are so confused whether to use um, statin or not, whether to give uh, MRA or not, because all this or RNA or not, because all these drugs have been not used in the large scale clinical trial. Second is there is a heterogeneity of the population. You think that the patient can be admitted, but patient doesn't want to get admitted. You think you need to dialyze, but you have many other options from North India, South India, Bangalore, or any other places where indigenous medicine can help probably they think. And then until and unless the kidney is cooked, too bad they are waiting. Second is, the biomarker which we too much rely on symptom of heart failure is misleading in patient with chronic kidney disease. Not so a crescendo, decrescendo trend of troponin I or my uh, CKMB which actually can predict myocardial infarction. And when we think about the heart failure, it is definite that in this all trial, that foundation four is very important therapy. But again, when it comes to the CKD as a barrier, all good thing cannot be utilized. So when a creatinine clear is below 30 or CKD stage 3A, 3B, you can use still all these things, that is beta blocker, MRA, SGLT2 inhibitor, RNA or AC inhibitor, whatever you uh, Think. And even in some patients, you need to give digoxin uh, to prevent the heart rate uh, go up or evaporating and uh, high sorbide hydrologin uh, combination. The moment you are in stage four, your strength of using this medicine is slow. So what I have showed you is a stage four patients. So whether I am justifiable in doing this, I don't know. But what I am, then why I am giving it? I am giving it to prevent a recurrent hospitalization and a good quality of life. And that's not a clear cut statement that what is best for an individual patient. But the more the kidney is in jeopardy, all these drugs becomes ineffective. So probably we have to make sure that patient stays in this particular entity or zone for rest of the life. Yeah. Over a period of time, our cardiologists, nephrologists have been able to show that aldosterone is a very important culprit in doing all this nuisance activity on the kidney and the heart. And they also, if you want to inhibit, the problem is they increases the potassium and increases the creatinine. So we have actually only one friend and that is a SGLT2 inhibitor which decreases the risk of hyperkalemia, which decreases the chances of progression of uh, more nephron loss and the beta blocker uh, along with it if you give there is hardly any change in blood pressure. But you cannot be satisfied only with other drug so you have to use 
so a combination of mra and sglt2 probably can reduce incidence hyperkalemia in future which is being studied and dr orgo has been highlighting that probably until unless this the future evidence is there this is a throp provoking statement but we don't have any clear guideline on this so as the guideline was there's not there so what we should do we should call for a panchayat so where a cardiologist will be there a nephrologist will be there and a endocrinologist a physician will be there so this is what we have uh, very recently in european society of heart failure which is called a delphi consensus uh, so i mean delphi ta khujle gye dekhlam delphi is a uh, ancient greek uh, city where the mastermind used to sit and decide and come to a consensus when everybody is against everybody's opinion so what used to happen centuries back now also is there and this delphi is a statistical method where they repetitively take the opinion of these people and try to find out how commonly they agree and they disagree so let's see what is the uh, this delphi uh, consensus says the delphi consensus says very clearly that this is the area where we don't disagree so probably what we don't agree is pathology of kidney disease diabetes induces hyperkalemia regardless of potassium preservative drug intake or not very few people disagree but most of the people agree on one thing that if you have a hyperkalemia to the tune of 5 more than 5.5 or more than 6 you need to define also you need to understand that the utilization of mra and ras is a risk factor for hyperkalemia majority of the people are giving a opinion but when it comes to the action there is no consensus so nobody is very unanimously clear that whether we should discontinue or deescalate this drugs which are culprit for hyperkalemia and that's the everyday problem what we nephrologist are facing and we are fighting sometimes with each other that why you stop it please start it and they also know but we didn't have any option and take home masses probably managing the risk of hyperkalemia should be part of individual care plan and probably we are not addressing the issues of low utilization of diet similarly what we agree most of the time patient with high risk under rest regime need to check potassium within 1 to 2 weeks after initiation and then every 3 months but there is no gospel truth in this you can do it more frequently depending upon your resources so what cardiac society recommends that if you have patient with diabetes and ckd you need to use statin ac inhibitor or arb for additional glucose control beyond sglt2 inhibitor the glp1 is going to be the future when it will be more tolerable for us patients this medicine in hemodialysis patient should be given or not the issue is very clear there is no robust data because after one year follow up we have been able to see and there is no much difference but definitely one difference is there that the dimension of the ventricle slows down over a period of time but that doesn't translate into clinical benefit so if you ask me in end stage renal failure patient if you want to continue or knee or not it's absolutely on the patient profile the more dilated the lv more 
severe the heart dis LV dysfunction, you need to continue it. The chances of hyperkalemia is not ex is being exaggerated most of the time. I just take one minute extra. We were being in a fix that whether to keep statin or not in patient with this sort of patients. And what has been shown, the lower the EGFR, the more the chances of painless myocardial infarction is there. And remember, this is just less than 45 ml per minute. So these patients will not go to nephrologist. This patient will not go to cardiologist or not to anybody. So please give them statin until and unless you see that they are really sat in tolerance, intolerant. PCSK9 inhibitor for secondary prevention with recurrent MI is probably a future strategy. And what Dr. Otonu was saying in patient with dialysis dependent CKD who are free from ASCBD. But the risk factor is there. New initiation of statin is not very useful. So patient will say, sir, you have to tell very clearly it is too late. It is not going to be beneficial for other stage. It is class one indication. Please don't be hesitant to give it. And this is a small statement that rosuvastatin produces probably more nephron loss. So whether nephron loss is equal to dialysis or not, no doubt about it, but probably with these bodies of presence today, we should start avoiding high dose of statin in patient with CKD. If we can want, we can egitimibe or other uh, PCSK9 inhibitor. And for extreme end stage renal disease, don't initiate them. And the last slide is, if you want to give heparin in these patients, give it for short duration, nothing is very clear or juicy. And among all noble oral anticoagulation, it is the enoxaparin. Uh, it is a... Namdai bule ya chye lexu is. Epixaban. Lekha nahi doi jan ne. So, dekhi ya mousa. So, definitely reduces major bleed than VKA. So, probably uh, that's the take home message. And this is the last one. When this I wanted to finish last because thiazide diuretic chlorthalidone doesn't work after a low certain amount of decrease in GFR. But what the science says today that if you give it in a meta dose in a patient with chronic kidney disease and heart failure, it works. So you need to understand there will be some molecule which will be discouraged to be used in the large dose at early stage of the disease, but very large dose may be useful when the disease is very advanced. And this is a dynamic thing. And thank you for consuming extra time. What we compensate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.